Today we are going to discuss optimization algorithms for deep learning. Optimization algorithms train neural networks faster by adjusting weights and learning rate. In deep learning, we would be dealing with bigger datasets. Training on larger datasets is slow. We need fast optimization algorithms which can speed up training process. We have already discussed gradient descent. Gradient descent adjusts the parameters iteratively to minimize cost function. These are the weight and bias updation rules. Suppose if we denote this set of parameters with theta, then this would be parameter updation rule. Here grad j would be partial derivatives of cost function with respect to all parameters. Gradient descent update parameters based on gradient. This gradients will be calculated based on entire data set. So it is also called as full batch gradient descent. Suppose if you have data set with 5 million training examples. Here x is the input data. With gradient descent for single weight update we need to process entire data set. Means we need to process this 5 million training examples for single weight updation. If dataset is too large, it will take more time for convergence. And also it requires large memory to calculate the gradient on entire dataset. If error surface is non-convex, it may trap at local minimum. We have these problems with basic gradient descent optimization algorithm. To overcome these problems, other variant stochastic gradient descent was proposed. This is same as basic gradient descent except it calculates the gradient based on single training example. This is the parameter updation rule. For each training example, it will update the parameters. Here, the gradient calculation is based on single training example. So, it requires less memory to calculate the gradient compared to the basic gradient descent. In basic gradient descent, to process all training examples, it uses vectorization. But in stochastic gradient descent, it processes each training example at a time. It loses speed up from vectorization. If error surface is non-convex, it may also trap at local minimum. If these are the contours of cost function, and here is the minimum of the cost function. Full batch gradient descent or basic gradient descent starts somewhere here and takes relatively large steps and relatively less noisy steps towards minimum. But but when it comes to stochastic gradient descent, if you started somewhere here, it will take very noisy steps towards minimum because gradient is calculated based on single training example. So sometimes it might take wrong direction like this. Stochastic gradient descent requires less memory but it takes very noisy steps towards minimum. Another variant, mini batch gradient descent overcomes the problem of stochastic gradient descent Mini batch gradient descent uses batch of training examples to calculate the gradient instead of single training example or entire data set. If this is the entire data set, this mini batch will use subset of this entire data set for single parameter updation. Again, same size subset will be used for another update. Means first it will process 100 training examples, then 101 to 200, then 201 to 300, like that it will continue. This is the formula for mini batch gradient descent weight updation. Here this n is the batch size. Mini batch gradient descent starts somewhere here and takes relatively large steps and relatively noisy steps towards minimum compared to stochastic gradient descent. But it takes smaller steps and noisy steps towards minimum compared to full batch gradient descent. This full batch gradient descent will take larger steps and very less noisy steps towards minimum. Here stochastic gradient descent takes very smaller steps and it is very noisy. Compared to stochastic gradient descent, it takes less noisy steps towards minimum. Compared to full batch gradient descent, it will take less memory because gradient is not calculated on entire data set. Instead, it will consider subset of data set for gradient calculation. It can utilize vectorization speed up. Let's see disadvantages of mini batch gradient descent. It takes noisy steps compared to full batch gradient descent and it takes longer time compared to full batch gradient descent for convergence. If error surface is non-convex, it may also stuck at local minimum.
you can see here updation speed and memory uses by these three gradient descent algorithms batch gradient descent is slow because it will update weights after processing entire data set for single parameter update it needs to process entire data set so it will take more memory updation speed of stochastic gradient descent is high because for each single training example it will update the weights and it requires low memory because it need not to process entire data set means it just needs to process single training example for weight updations updation speed of this mini batch sorry here updation speed and memory usage of this mini batch gradient descent is medium when it compared with batch gradient descent and stochastic gradient descent so far we have seen gradient descent variants batch gradient descent stochastic gradient descent mini batch gradient descent we are going to see gradient descent optimization algorithms momentum adagrad rms prop and adam Let's see challenges involved in training deep neural networks with vanilla mini batch gradient descent. For convex functions like this, we will have only one minimum. But with non-convex functions like this, it is possible to have many local minima. Local minima can be problematic if they have high cost in comparison to global minimum. Suppose here this is also minimum. See here and let's assume this is the global minimum if our algorithm set is set here here we have huge difference if you have such kind of large difference for this global minimum and local minimum then it would be problematic many structures other than local minima also have small gradients plateau saddle points and other flat regions saddle points are points where one dimension slopes up and other slopes down saddle points usually surrounded by plateau of same error suppose if we take this at this point in both directions same slope will be there which makes it hard for gradient descent to escape as the gradient is closer to zero in all dimensions and second one is learning rate if learning rate is too small it leads to slow convergence it need to take very smaller and smaller steps it will take a lot of time to reach this minimum if learning rate is too large last function will fluctuate around the minimum sometimes it might even diverge and the same learning rate applies to all parameter updates if our data is sparse and our features have very different frequencies we might not want to update all of them to the same extent but perform larger updates for rarely occurring features here we have two different frequencies for these two features w1 and w2 this vanilla gradient descent works based on only gradients this is the updation rule for the gradient descent it will work based on the gradients so it cannot be fast it cannot escape from local minima saddle points and flat regions good optimization algorithm finds the minimum fast and reliably well means it doesn't stack at the local minima saddle points or flat regions but rather it goes for the global minimum if you have cast function which has contours like this means cast function surface is like this surface goes more steeply in one dimension than other Contour plot means if we have surface like this, if we fix z value to some constant, for each constant z value, you will get one 2D shape. Like that, if we fix z values, you will get contours like this. The graph is called as contour plot for respective surface. If you have error surface like this, vanilla gradient descent will oscillate across the slopes as shown in this image. Momentum is a method that helps accelerate the gradient descent in relevant direction and reduce the oscillation as shown in this image. Gradient descent with momentum remembers the update at each iteration and determines the next update as linear combination of this gradient and previous update. Here this momentum term gamma also called as exponentially decay factor usually its values between 0 and 1 this gamma determines the relevant contribution of the current gradient this one and earlier gradients in the parameter updation momentum term increases update for 
dimensions whose gradients point in the same direction and reduces updates for dimensions whose gradients changes the direction. As a result, we gain faster convergence and reduced oscillation. You can imagine like this. When you push a ball down the hill, the ball accumulates the momentum as it rolls downhill, becoming faster and faster on the way. Same thing will happen to our parameter updates. Here you can see good visualization for the momentum. If this comma value is 1, this momentum algorithm will give more importance to this previous gradients. So it will act like frictionless ball. If this comma is 0, then gradient descent with momentum acts like vanilla gradient descent means this entire term will become zero now updation rule will be theta equal to theta minus learning rate into this gradient so it will be like basic gradient descent let's see this visualization see here if there is no momentum this ball set will set local minimum if we add momentum to this bar, ball will move faster and it can escape local minimum and it will reach us to the global minimum. Those visualizations are taken from these two links. Let's see problems with gradient descent with momentum. Learning rate should set manually. Here this alpha we need to set manually same learning rate will be used for all parameters means in all dimensions but we may require small learning rate in some dimension and large learning rate in other dimension let's see another one adaptive gradient algorithm in short adagrad let's see motivation for adagrad suppose if you have error surface like this let's take contours for easy visualization gradient in this direction is very high whereas gradient in this direction is low large learning rate leads to divergence on this direction w1 if we take small learning rate make too little progress in this direction w2 we need a learning rate adapts to each dimension in this direction we need one learning rate in this direction we need another learning rate when we are too far from the minimum we should take larger steps when we are approaching minimum we should take smaller steps means learning rate should be decreased when approaching minimum adagrad uses different learning rates for every parameter theta i at every time step t adagrad adaptively scales learning rate for different dimensions it adapts lower learning rate for parameters having larger gradients in this direction it will take smaller learning rate like 0.01 we have larger gradients here in this direction we have smaller gradient so it will take larger learning rate something like 0.9 it adapts lower learning rate for the parameters having larger gradients so it avoids the divergence and it adapts higher learning rate for parameters having small gradients so its convergence will be faster at time t adagrad maintains the state st squared sum of fast gradients st equal to this fast state plus elemental square of current gradients here this gradient is written like this z at time t it is zt this is the update rule here we divide the learning rate alpha with square root of sum of past gradients here this epsilon is a small number to avoid the division by zero if dimensional gradients are larger then square root of sum of past squared gradients also larger this term will be larger here we are dividing with big number so gradients will be smaller if dimensional gradients are small then square root of sum of past squared gradients this term will also be smaller so resultant gradients will be larger it will be like normalizing each feature every time this st will be increasing so this alpha always will be decreasing so we have learning rate decay here let's see the main benefit of adagrad it eliminates the need to manually tune the learning rate 
It adaptively scales the learning rate for different dimensions by normalizing with respect to gradient magnitude in the corresponding direction. Adagrad's main weakness is, as number of iterations increases, scale factor, this square root of sum of fast squared gradients increases. This term will be keep on increases, so this alpha will be keep on decreasing, then this learning rate will be close to zero if this term keep on increasing. Then algorithm may stop learning. At that time, if algorithm at local minimum, it will settle there itself, it cannot reach global minimum. For linear and less complex models, Adagrad will work better, but when it comes to deep learning, it converges pretty slow. In RMS properties also, the learning rate is adapted for each of the parameters. RMS prop will resolve the Adagrad's radically diminishing learning rate. RMS prop will divide the learning rate by an exponentially decaying average of squared gradients. This hyperparameter gamma restricts the gradients for the recent time steps, means it will not consider all gradients. Algorithm will forget early gradients and focus on most recent gradients only. Replacing this sum of squares of past gradients with this decaying average of squared gradients. Then this learning rate will not decrease rapidly like Adagrad. Here this alpha h time step t. So alpha t. Compared to Adagrad, here this term will be smaller one because it will not consider all gradients. It will consider only recent gradients. So alpha will not decrease that much. So learning rate will not be decreased that much faster. Compared to Adagrad's, this RMS prop will converges faster. Let's see another one, Adaptive Moment Estimation, in short, ADAM. ADAM also computes adaptive learning rates for each parameter. ADAM is an update to RMS prop. In addition to storing exponentially decaying average of past gradients like RMS prop, ADAM also keeps an exponentially decaying average of past gradients similar to momentum. We compute the decaying average of past gradients, Vt and also past squared gradient st like this with these two formulas as vt and st are initialized as vectors of zeros the authors of adam observe that they are biased towards zero especially during initial time steps and especially when the decay rates are small they reduce the biases by computing bias corrected first and second moment estimates they then use this updated parameters just as we have seen in RMS prop. So update rule of Adam would be something like this. Here we have corrected momentum term and corrected pass square gradients. Adam combines best features of all the previous algorithms. It adds momentum term and adaptive learning rate to the basic gradient descent algorithm. Adam is the best among adaptive optimizers in the most of the cases. Here we have momentum, so it can easily escape the local minimum. Here adaptive learning rate is there, so in different directions it can choose different learning rates. And while computing this past gradients, it is using exponentially decaying average. So it will restrict the past gradient to some recent time steps. Learning rate will not be rapidly decreased like Adagrad. That's why we will use in most of the cases Adam as a optimizer.